Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I was at a, uh, was at a wedding yesterday, and uh, it was a wedding of a nephew, and it was performed by a nephew, which, uh, you know, it kind of is leaving. We've got about three pastors in our, in our family, in, our, in my generation, and, and many MCs, people who figure out they, they're great MCs and are a, are a talent, are still a talent. And um, all of us were overlooked in that generation for a younger generation. And I sat there looking at this thinking, you know what, our day has come and our day has gone. And <laughs> we, are, we are on the scrap heap. Amen. And uh, so, so uh, yeah, it was really great. It was one of those weddings are great things, I'm sure, as you have them. They're those times when families get together. And, uh, and, uh, and everyone's dressed up. It's really nice. Um, but uh, I was thankful for it. And uh, here I am today. So be kind to me. Uh, we're, we're not needed at weddings anymore. So I hope, <laughs> bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> All right. Why don't you turn? I'm going to do two readings this morning. Uh, one is from, uh, from Matthew chapter 16, verse uh, 15 to 19. And uh, then we're going to, and if you keep your finger there, we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 47. And if you're on our SMS network, you would see that I uh, title what I wanted to speak about today, a transformational church, a church that, uh, that transforms its environment, tra transforms the environment around it. And speaking about that, particularly in relation to where I believe God is taking us, uh, and some of the things, uh, some of the call of God uh, on us as a fellowship, but very much uh, what that means for us as individuals. You know that the church is a collective. A church, when we describe a church, we speak of a body of people. That's really important. Uh, but a church is only uh, a collection of individuals and um, made up of those individuals. And so what we have to say uh, in that space really is, is how each of us actually uh, function under that. <clears throat> I, uh, and it's, you know, this sort of time of year finds, finds us in a bit of a, a, a reflective state, finds us in a, a time when we're thinking about the things that God's done amongst us and the things that uh, God is doing. Uh, it starts off for us kind of around our AGM. We start thinking about it. It seems to go on for a while. And then we have a birthday. Then we're coming up to the end of the year when, you know, when, we, when we're winding down things and then the start of the year and we're talking about, uh, about our future, about how we envisage where God might be taking us. And um, it, it's just that kind of season. And I was this week on a uh, retreat. I went, to, uh, I went up to, um, up to um, I just went away uh, very much uh, asking the Lord, uh, as I guess leaders tend to do, uh, pastors tend to do uh, in, in individuals uh, what's God saying you know what might God be saying to us about the next year and I came away with two things that uh, for me are really God's word about that the first was this that uh, was that leadership is such a critical uh, element of what uh, of what's of what of what's entrusted God, God puts a lot of uh, he puts a lot on us in a leading position, and that, that's not necessarily confined to, uh, to a pastor, but it certainly, is, uh, it certainly is in the case of where I sense God is leading our ministry. Uh, you know, not just about, there's one aspect of that, it's about articulating a way forward, uh, it's about, uh, but it's more than that, it's about ex what kind of example does God expect out of leadership, uh, what, does God re what does God expect of a leader? Uh, in, in order to hear things. You're going to take this responsibility down. You can take this responsibility down to even just being the head of the home. God might, you, you might, but it might be exactly what a ministry, it might be an area of responsibility that God has given you. God's calling leadership. He's calling leadership to stand up. Uh, emphasizing leadership. And leadership's not about being, you know, it's not about being a, it's not about being in charge. 
It's not about being a, a boss. It's about, uh, it's about the, the right kind of heart. It's about, it's about a servant heart. It's about, uh, there's, a, there's a, 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 a humility about it, a, um, an openness. Uh, I was listening to Francis Chan. Francis Chan's a well-known preacher. If you, if you follow, uh, if you follow, you know, uh, his messages sometimes on YouTube. And Francis was preaching just this month uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and it says this: It says, "Therefore, since God's mercy, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways." And we do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, uh, by setting forth the truth, we plainly setting the forth, uh, forth the truth plainly. We commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. That's an absolute test for leadership, and an absolute test for um, uh, for transparent for transparency. And the second aspect of that is, uh, you know, just what kind of church God is taking us to be, what kind of ch church God is making us, uh, where is God leading us? And it's such an, again for me, such an awesome responsibility. There's a, it, it's so important that a leader has a sense of where God is leading us. Has to happen. Has to be. And... Um, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I was talking to, uh, I was to uh, as we came to our birthday, as we came to our birthday celebration, and uh, I, I, I said this uh, to our church. I said, you know, God's given us a seed. God's given us a seed. He's given us a seed, uh, a, a seed, well, he's given us two that I can sense. One is that we're, we're people who worship. Uh, that there is a great presence of God in our worship. And, and you know, I was standing here today thinking about that and thinking, well, you know, what makes up this worship? This worship and how we communicate it, how we engage with it, uh, it, it surely is the presence of God. It surely is that. But it also is us. It's also us. It's also us being here engaging with God. And sometimes we don't think about that. We just think, you know what, we'll come, we'll be here, uh, we'll, we'll sing and it's great, and if we love a song, we'll sing it. But there's something more than that happening. Uh, our presence adds to worship. Our, you know, our participation, seriously, even our being here, even our being here uh, and engaging. And, and, and who would think, who would think, that as we worship, it's touching the person next to us. Who would think that? But the reality is that it is. It makes it important for us to be here. It makes it important for us to be here, dare I say, in a, ti in a timely way. Uh, and to really not view worship just as a sense in which I gain something out of it. Uh, or uh, how it makes me feel. But this real sense, you know, that as I dedicate a sacrifice and an offering to God, uh, that comes out of my very best response to God, it bears a witness all of its own. Amen. People are touched by it. People are uplifted by it. And God's given us that seed. God's given us that seed because people notice it. People see that seed in our midst. People feel it, sense it. They say when, you, when we walk in here, we feel a sense, a beautiful presence of God. We, didn't, we, didn't just, we don't know how to make that. We just do that, amen? And people are lifted by it and helped by it. But it's a presence of the Spirit. And we... Uh, we embrace that, and it impacts people around us. Remember that when you stand and worship. Remember that. The second aspect of what about the Lord has given to us, and this, you know, this has been such a word in, into my heart, and I can't let it go, is the aspect of how to be friendly. How to be friendly. How to, how to reach out to people. 
you cannot help but notice that God is doing something in our midst. Cannot help it. Uh, that God is bringing people to us who are new to our family. People who say, you know what, we sense this is God's home for us. Sense that this is where God's leading us to. And starts out just as a trickle, starts out as ones and twos, but now regularly, three, four, five, six. In my heart, there's a sense about this. There's a sense that, uh, that uh, I know people come to visit. I know not everybody comes to stay. I know that. But there's a sense about people desperately longing to belong somewhere. Find a family. And they're looking and hoping someone will make a friend of them. And, uh, you know, that's not church in some kind of diluted form. That absolutely is a central part of what God brings us to. Central. That relationship uh, is the centerpiece of how God brings us together. I know Christ. I mean, obviously, that's the foundation. We're going to read that in just a second. But relationship, God uses us to connect to people. And people say, when we walk in, we feel warm, welcoming people. And I have a sense that God, if we'll have the courage to engage that, to open our hearts to that, to open our hearts to people, I have a sense that we've got no idea what God will give us, what God will release to us. And, uh, and so, you know, I think, I feel like God's uh, asking of uh, our pastors and our leaders to to focus on that, to focus on how we actually build relationship, how we actually create uh, pathways for people to connect. But mostly it comes down to this. It comes down to if you'll, if you'll make a friend of somebody, if you'll just reach out to somebody, if you'll talk to somebody new, if you'll invite someone to a coffee or to a lunch, uh, there is something powerful about the community that you'll begin to develop. And the great thing about it is, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. I love seeing that even our newest people do it. Even our newest people do it. Even our newest people go to new people and sit down and talk to them. You don't need a degree. You don't need a theological, you know, great understanding. You can do it. You can make people feel welcome. You can engage with people. You can make them feel part of the family. And I so, God has given that to us. Wouldn't it be awesome if we, if we really ran with it, ran with that seed, plant it as a tree and see what God might do through it. Amen? Amen. Well, this morning as we gather just around these scriptures, I want to just talk to you about something that I, uh, that really uh, Chris challenged me about. And he said, Don, he said, you know, if you, if you say God is telling you you can have anything you want in the next season of eternal, what does that look like? I want to take our thoughts to today to Acts chapter 2, uh, but started out just with reading with Matthew. Uh, and just talk about our church and walk through it. But I want to ask you something today. It's where you are before we do that, where you are, just open your heart and say, God, will you really speak to me about this, about things that I can do. Help me to be open to changing. And uh, help me to listen to the voice of your spirit. Have a better ear for the voice of your spirit. And uh, to be open. If God's calling me to change, then to actually be prepared to change. So if you'll do that, as we just begin to go through these passages of Scripture, I just want to share some thoughts with you around that. So Matthew chapter uh, 15, so, sorry, 16. And, um, you know, when you preach here, you, 
you, you set your markers in your thing and then they disappear and then you have to find it. And it always takes twice as long, or it feels like it when you're up here. So Matthew 6, at least Matthew is not a hard one to find, but bless the Lord sometimes, it can be worse. Um, so this is Peter's declaration uh, of faith uh, and Jesus' blessing of him. And, and Simon Peter says this, you are the, uh, verse 15, then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. Revelation of who Jesus is, given to us by the Father. Did not learn this from any human being. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And listen to this, and this is the part I want us to get today. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Amen. Okay, so we'll come back to that, but let's just read Acts chapter 2. And this is um, right, after, right after Pentecost, right after having been baptized in the Spirit. And you know something here, you know where you are? You're at the start of, an, of the church. <laughs> You're at the start of, a meet, of how the church began. And uh, it's, uh, it's incredible because what is actually unfolding here is still in place today. Amen? Amen? That what we see happening here that's at the start of something that is going to transform, uh, transform the whole world is in place today. And uh, we're going just, we're just going to share that story together. So let's read from verse 40. Uh, 41 um, to verse 47. And those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day uh, about 3,000 in all. You know this is a massive problem, right? You think you've got a problem with a few people coming? There are about 120, something like that, whatever, in the upper room. Something happens to them, and all of a sudden they've got to find a way to not just count how many are saved, but actually begin to put them into fellowship. And, and Luke's writing this account. He's, tr he's writing this account for somebody, and he's trying to tell them uh, to who he's sending this. He's trying to tell them this is what's happening this is what's happening. It's unbelievable, but this is what's happening. That all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing uh, in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Uh, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money they had with those that were in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Amen. Bless the Lord. Um, so what, uh, what's unfolding here uh, after, is, is after a series of unprecedented events. You know, the, Jesus has been with them. They've seen the crucifixion of the Messiah. Uh, they've seen his resurrection. And they've seen his ascend into heaven. Uh, he has given them a uh, instruction, a directive, uh, that uh, they're to share this uh, gospel, go and make uh, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. You know that from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, uh, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded uh, you to do. 
And in that next 40 days, Jesus spends time with them. Uh, and at one time, there tells them, wait until the Spirit is coming upon you. Have you ever been at the start of something new? Like uh, something that's just happened? I, uh, I've um, got a photo up here. Uh, one, of, one of my claims to fame is that I was involved in starting a new business. Some of you will actually know that business. It's called Priceline, right? And uh, that, that was our, we were right there at the start. And it's one of the most extraordinary things to be in a new business and totally design it. And I was in charge of operation. That's me, in case you don't recognize me, right on the end. You know, and I showed that photo to my wife. She said, what happened to you? I just not. <laughs> I don't think she was talking about the fact that I don't have a mustache anymore. But uh, <laughs> bless the Lord. But that was a, that was a that was the guy in the suit there. He was, he was the guy who funds us and was one of Australia's wealthiest guys. Uh, now chief executive was a guy in the blue suit, just a really nice guy. There was a buyer in there, the boss's son there, and myself and a manager. And that was our fifth store. But that was. Um, you know, I, I uh, sometimes go into a price line and I wish I could tell the sales assistant, you know what, you're here because I was part of this in the early days, but I don't think they'll care one dot about it, so I don't bother saying anything about it anymore. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, okay, this happened in a, in a life. But you know, starting Eternal, Eternal was, Eternal was, uh, uh, it's not a chain, Eternal was about people. But I think about our church. I think about what our church has represented. And nine years isn't a long time. But, I, but if you look at, we've, we've done some things together, amen? You know, we've, uh, we've shared some struggles together. We've shared some difficult moments at each other. We've seen God answer some prayer. We've shared uh, some joyous moments. Some people have come. Some people have uh, gone. Uh... We, we can tell that we've got on in years and aged, and the kids are the ones who give it away, amen? Ones that, ones that came here, I think Evan was crawling when he came. You know, now he's standing up here doing actions and stuff, and tall as anything. But we've seen kids born. Uh, we've gone through tough moments together. We've helped each other through difficult times. We've shared some, some good things. Uh, and uh, some of those things, uh, uh, you know, we've buried family. We've buried family and we've buried friends. Uh, so, so things that have happened. Uh, and you, uh, uh, an eternal is a story of, a, of having just started something, but now is a whole community and is a whole family and it's emerging. And, uh, the fact that it's represented for some people a place where they have found Christ, a place where they've been baptized, uh, you know, a place where those are extraordinary things. Those are great things. But we are gathered all, unlike a business or whatever, we are gathered around something far more fundamental. We are gathered around this reality that we are children of the Most High God. Amen? And that, uh, uh, and that Peter describes what, is, what has happened to us. He said once we were like people that were, you know, we, we were strangers to each other. I mean, I, there were some of us that started here. Someone was asking me about this yesterday. And I said there was about 18 of us that started together. But God has brought us together as a family. For those who didn't know the Lord, God brought them as people who were afar off, brought them close. For some who did not know the Savior, who did not know mercy, they have obtained mercy. And God has used us in that way. Made us into a family. And people have discovered that. You know, I... I uh, as we reflect on what was happening in Acts, as we reflect on what Luke is trying to communicate here and, uh, and trying to, to let 
the people who he's writing to know what has happened. He says, you know, the power of God is so amazing. We're seeing people saved. We're seeing people uh, touched by, uh, you know, we're seeing prayers answered. We are seeing uh, people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing people that, that meet together. And he talks about some of these aspects. And I just want to mention a few of them that he highlights in this passage. He says they received the word. They received the word. They received the word and were baptized. You know that the most important emphasis of what we focus on and what we do uh, is that the word is preached. Amen. That the word is declared. Hallelujah. That uh, we are founded on this word. And um, uh, this word that brings the kingdom. The news that the kingdom of God has come to people. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, it says that they continued. Uh, in, and, and, and it changed their lives. Imagine this in a community that has known nothing like it. It changed their lives. They continued in the apostles' doctrine, in teaching, in fellowship, in communion, and in prayer. Some, nothing like this has happened. And Luke is saying that the power of the church and what is happening in the church is transforming the way people live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're seeing it today. Amen. Bless the Lord. They helped in practical ways. You know, I think I've never preached from this passage of Scripture because of this verse. That people sold all their possessions and gave it away. And I, think, I thought, who's going to listen to that? It's going to be ridiculous and scare everybody. Well... That's not how it has to be. But we live with others in mind. We live that when we're able to help somebody, we do. Amen? We live with the, the capacity that where God gives us capacity, we share and bless people. Amen? That we live with our eyes not on ourselves, but on other people and what they're going through and do what we can to help. Amen? That we attend a church and be in church regularly. This is kind of like what I said about worship. That worship uh, is not just about a, an experience that, you know, that I want to be filled. But that our lives touch other people even in worship. So the same applies that when we meet together, our lives touch other people. When we're here, it touches other people. And... and, and <laughs> And, you know, I know there's a trend today. There's a trend in church that, that you can come, you don't, that you don't have to come regularly. You can come when you feel like it. And I'm not speaking about the fact that we need breaks, that sometimes we're going through things. But, but you know, prioritizing church is about something that actually helps us. It's good to be around people. It's good to be around people that are of like mind. It's good to be in amongst our crowd and our community. Uh, I, I cannot tell you that one of the things that has happened to me, if you ask me what's happened to you in the last 12 months that's been most impacting on your life, I want to tell you that it's when I have sat with people. It's when I have sat with people. And, when you, and often when you think you're going to give them something, you find out that you're helped by it. You find out that people are actually doing something for you. You find out that the Spirit speaks to you and, gi and, and gives you a word for something. Being around people is such a key thing that we do. And, um, and being, being in church regularly, you know, I know we get this linear ranking uh, in our mind of saying God first, church, family second, Church, third, whatever, work, fourth, or whatever, whatever that order is in our mind. You know, as if we have, uh, as if we we're able to love in a sort of a linear sense and dispense from a reservoir that, that runs out. So we've got to be careful how we do it. Uh, you know, I know we had the rugby just recently, and I know Chris doesn't want to talk about that. But I was listening to Tim Healy from, uh, from Riverview the other day 
who is a South African and leading it, and, but now in Australia, saying, you know, that uh, when people ask him about South Africa or Australia, he says, he says, you know what, it's like South Africa is my mother. I thought it was a great explanation. And Australia is my wife. He said, you know what, I can love my mother in one way because she gave birth to me and I can love my, and I love my, and I can love my country like, like I love my wife. I got the capacity for both. He said, the only problem is uh, when my mother is playing my wife. <laughs> he says, in which case I side with my wife. <laughs> we, but we got it with our grandkids, don't we? We got it with our grandkids. We think, you know what? My heart is so full, I can possibly not love another grandkid. It would possibly, there's not enough room for, for that. And you find you have the capacity to love again. It's like find a different room of your heart. Amen? And, and I know there are times in our family when our, when our family needs us around. I know that. I know that. But I believe that we have the capacity to love our church and to love our family and to be committed to both. Amen? Prioritize it. And uh, to make it an important part of what, we do, of what we belong. If we'll see it. If we'll see that we are we are a critical ingredient to that mix. A critical ingredient. They met together. They met together in their homes. They had communion together. They prayed together. It was critical, but they did it. And you know, what, what comes out in this passage that we can't miss, yeah? What comes out in this passage is the things that people did. And there were things that the Spirit of God did. Now, I'm not saying we're not energized by the Spirit. Of course we are. Of course we're helped by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit. But there were things that the Spirit did that we cannot do. That they saw miracles. Hallelujah. They saw the power of the Spirit. You know what? Isn't that going to be something for us? That that same power of the Spirit, that same presence of Jesus that was operating in the early church operates, is available here today. That we can pray for people's healing. Amen? And see them healed. That we can pray for God to intervene in impossible situations and see God do that. That we can ask God to touch relationships and see Him do it. That we can ask God to take a person who is broken hearted and help them. A person who is down and help them. And God does it through the power of His Spirit. We can pray those prayers because we know the power of the Spirit is given to us to do it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Even here. Even in our midst. Even you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they saw people saved. They saw they had favor. You know, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't, see, you can't save anybody. I worry less about how many we are this morning because I know that's a work of the Spirit. That's the work of the Spirit. That's what God will give us and do. We concentrate on the things that God has instructed us to do and that we can do. Meet regularly. Pray with one another. Be involved in the doctrine. Fellowship with We do those things because... We make a critical difference in it. We make a critical difference. You know, if you, if you look at Acts and how it unfolds, there's some incredible things that happen. You know, that people come to this because of one thing, it leads to another. As people are saved, that gospel goes out and touches the lives of Individuals, people like Saul that come to the church, that dramatically converted, but but by, but are helped by Pete, but helped by someone in the church, and and uh, that conversion leads him to be a critical person in the gospel uh, of Christ in this message. You know that he, that through him. Uh, all the epistles, most all, the majority of the epistles are written. That uh, a man 
called Cornelius, calls to Peter and says, you've got to come here. And it's the start of the Gentiles uh, being introduced to, to the gospel. That Paul gets a call, a, a vision to go to Macedonia, does that. It starts that ministry. And in this account, uh, not just the things that, that work well, but even the things that are problematic. You know, they, they, they have issues on the food roster over there. And it makes the gospel. You think, man, nothing has changed. Hallelujah. They had it there. We, and they got through it. We can get through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But there were, there, were, there were arguments. There were even conflicts that happened in this church. And some of, them were, some of them were pretty serious. You know. But this church has gone on. And we are, the, we are the recipients of that same message that was declared then. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what? It comes back to this. It comes back. It comes back to the fact that there were 120 people in a room that were baptized in the Holy Spirit and from there the church began. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're part of that. I'm going to close. I'm just going to ask maybe if Crystal uh, can come for me please. As we close. I want to read go back to that verse of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I think about eternal. You know the thing about, the thing about uh, a history and a story is that when you're in the story, you can't see the end, right? You can't see the end of it. But you're in the story. Amen. And that story's end, that story's end is going to be impacted by the fact that you're in the story. It just depends on what you do in the story. Amen? It just depends on what you do. God's given a seed to us. God's placed you here. And I know that God's giving us a responsibility, giving me a responsibility to make sure that those seeds are those seeds are preserved and those seeds are looked after. But as I said earlier, in the end, church comes down to individuals. It comes down to you and me. It comes down to us. Church is think of it as a collective, if sure. But it comes down to the person in your seat. Amen? You and me and about what we do. Let me ask you this this morning as I close. You'll open your heart. You'll open your heart just where you are. And maybe let's just close our eyes. Bow our heads. Let me ask you this. If you'll open your heart and ask God just submit your life to the unique purpose for why God has you here. There is something that you are going to bring to the table that no one else can bring. There is something that God has designed just for you. And you know, how does the Lord speak to you this morning? What's God telling you about that? Do you think there's room in you to be a, a, a better friend, and be more friendly? Then why don't you just make a commitment right now where you are and saying, Lord, help me to be more friendly. Help me to notice people more. Help me to reach out to people. You know, anyone, old, young, uh, man, woman, educated or not, rich or poor, we can all do that. doesn't matter. You only have to have been here for five minutes. You can do that. Say, God, make me a person who's friendly. Not just, not just for church, but, but in, your, in your circle of influence, at your work, at your school. Make me a person who's more friendly and who reaches to people.
And, I'm going, and if you pray that prayer, I'm going to ask that God will give you an insight like you've never had before. I'm going to ask that the Lord does that this morning. Give you an insight and an ability and a wisdom to engage with people. Give you favor with people. That when you talk to them, something will just respond in their hearts. If you pray that prayer, I'm going to ask that God will really see it and honor it. And let me ask you to do this. Let me ask you to make a commitment if it's appropriate for you this morning. To prioritize being at church. It's not because we want the numbers. I know being around the people, the community of God's good for you. It's good for you. It'll, it uplifts you and encourages you. There's something about giving away that gets us more than what we gave. And when you come to church, you're giving away. You're giving away something of yourself. You're giving away your time and you're giving away your, your engagement and you're opening your heart to people. And something about that is good. And God will give you more. God will give you more. I have seen it over and over. God will give you more. It's good to be here. Make church a priority in your life. And you never know. You never know the people that walk in here on a day whose lives are going to be transformed because they had a conversation with you. You spoke to them. And so, Father, just as we, in this moment, you see our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that this word today as it touches people, and I know it has. And people who are praying these prayers and saying right now, God, make me, give me a greater friendliness. Give me a more open spirit. Help me to engage with people. Help me to think of others and see their world and see their life. Lord, I'm praying today that wherever that prayer is prayed, that you'll meet it and exceed it with a greater ability and an insight that people will that will just touch, be made available through your Spirit to hearts today. I ask, Lord, that in ways that we don't imagine, we're going to see that and feel that, experience that.